Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about the Retribution Paladin in World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic to talk about the biggest issue that they have as a DPS spec and that issue is their lack of AoE damage. Now Retribution Paladins can bring a great deal to a raid but without AoE damage they are questionable especially in terms of speedrunning which more and more guilds care about or not necessarily speedrunning, but certainly a lot of guilds in this day and age care about doing raids as quickly and efficiently as possible. And if you have a DPSer in Burning Crusade where you have a lot of trash to deal with that isn't capable of doing AoE damage or very limited AoE damage, then that is a huge de uh, detriment to the speed that the raid can clear the content. That is in spite of all the benefits that the Retribution Paladin brings to a raid. And I've had this discussion late at night with uh, my guild leader from Salad Bakers, uh, we were having this discussion about like, do you bring a rep paladin for all the benefits it has, especially on bosses, despite the fact their AoE damage is pretty crap. And that is a genuine debate that is uh, that is being had at this particular um, a particular point in a lot of guilds. Hell, some guilds haven't even used rep paladins to begin with because they feel that they're just a complete waste of space. But here's the thing. Red Paladins are very valuable to a raid team. And one of the things I learned playing on private servers in particular to in, in harsh ways is how much you lose by not having one in a raiding team and how hard it can be to find a good Retribution Paladin. It's it's not a fun spec necessarily. There's a lot of things you need to do. You pretty much need to gear as a warrior. Less emphasis on hit, more on expertise, but pretty much the same gearing as a warrior. Lots of expense in that. And you need to get the gear from dungeons, uh, tanking uh, as a prop paladin if you want to have a chance at it. And a lot of people think you're crap, so on and so forth. So not necessarily a fun spec to play, let's be very clear on this. But the rep paladin gives you this, a third blessing. In the vast majority of raids these days, you will not have more than one holy and one prop paladin uh, for an ideal raid setup. So the retribution paladin gives you that third blessing. Now that third blessing matters for certain classes far more than others. But that's still a benefit to have it in the vast majority of situations for the for the vast majority of classes and specs. So a benefit to have that. Then there is the judgments. Not only does Red Paladin give you a fair judgment, so you can have Crusader, Wisdom, and Light on a target. Uh, the Red would judge Crusader for the 3% crit and extra Holy damage. The Holy will judge Light and the Prot will judge Wisdom. But not only do you get that fair judgment, but the Red is the one that can ensure those judgments are up the vast majority of times. They can ensure the highest uptime of all those judgments because through Crusader Strike, you are refreshing the duration of all those judgments. It doesn't work in every situation. In the footage here of our command, if in fact, it actually wisdom fell off. Wisdom was being provided by our Holy Paladin in this case. He couldn't move because he had to heal the tank. He couldn't move to reapply it when it fell off. So I had to switch to wisdom. But most of the time, you have a Holy uh, uh, judging light that's certified. You have prior judging wisdom if you have one. Not necessarily in the case of our command, uh, but you have that, and then the red just keeps it up for the vast majority of the fight. Maybe some real, uh, maybe you have to reapply it at some points. But why does wisdom matter in particular? Wisdom matters because hunters, hunter DPS matters. Hunters are capable of doing the highest single target damage in the entire game. But the way they're able to do it is with a lot of buffs and debuffs from other classes. Bloodlust, Feral Druid, uh, Shaman, uh, Grace of Air Totem, Sunder Armor on a target, Exposed Armor, etc, etc. And Wisdom is a big part of that because Hunters, if they want to min-max their DPS, have significant mana issues because they can't use their Aspect. They want to use Attack Power, they want to get Attack Power, they want to uh, use Dark Runes, but Dark Runes and Mana Potions aren't enough. So uh, Wisdom is a massive DPS increase to Hunters who don't who and, and puts less strain, mana strain. Basically, if you have Wisdom on a target, your Hunters won't generally run out of mana if they're using consumables. If you don't have Wisdom, they'll run Oom, um, the DPS will fall uh, through the floor, it will completely collapse. It's that big of a difference. And of course, there is the 2% damage aura for the group the Rep Retribution Paladin is in. All of them are very solid uh, benefits. But with the Retribution Paladin doing little to no AoE, in speed running, uh, in a speedrunning situation where you're not really where the main issue is going to be dealing with the trash, not necessarily the bosses, then, there, then there's a debate on whether or not you want to bring one. But Here's the thing, there is a solution, at least the way I see it. Now, I could be completely wrong on this. 
plenty of people can will likely disagree with me uh, on this, and I'm sure plenty of people, plenty of Red Paladins will firmly disagree with uh, what the solution is. But here's the thing. The footage you're seeing here is from my perspective of Prop Paladin and Mount Hygel on a certain server. And although I cannot, I wasn't beating the Warlocks and the Mages, I was certainly being competitive. And I was the highest DPS in the raid on Trash beyond those Warlocks and Mages while tanking. Yes, while tanking as a Prop Paladin, you can do enormous amounts of damage. And the vast majority of that damage is coming from Consecration. There is some from Holy Shield, there is some from Seal of Righteousness and, and Judgment, there is some from Retribution Arrow and all that kind of stuff, but the vast majority, I'd say over 80% easily, especially on very large packs, is coming from Consecration. Now, Consecration scales very well with spell power. It's not quite one-to-one -one, uh, damage increase per spell power point, but it's very, very close to it. And of course, you have to divide that by eight. So basically, every points, every eight points of spell power, every consecration tick is doing one more damage. Eighty, like the flask, increases the consecration damage by pretty much close to ten, and so on and so forth, right? So if you have say eight hundred spell power, you're getting for each consecration tick for eight hundred spell power, you're getting close to a hundred, maybe like ninety-five, something along those lines. But you get the idea. That's how Consecration works. It is a great... Uh, it, it, it scales very well with spell power and it's a significant amount of damage once you have a very high amount of spell power, especially if you're dealing with a lot of targets. Now, a lot of people might come up and say, well, yeah, you're doing a lot of damage, Consecration is protection, but if we look at the protection talent tree here on Wowhead, the only talent that increases your Consecration uh, damage in the in the protection tree is one-handed weapons uh, weapon specialization which when you have five points in it increases your all your damage by five percent for five points when you're equipping a one-handed melee weapon so with weapon and shield you're doing five percent more damage but here's the thing protection may not be specced uh, 20 points into retribution. You might not have Sanctity Aura, that's 10% damage. You may not have Crusade, that's 3% damage. And even if you do have Crusade and Sanctity Aura as a protection paladin, you may not have, you're not going to have improved Sanctity Aura unless you move the retribution in the protection, um, in the protection paladin group. So the difference between a protection paladin and a retribution paladin may be as little as, you know, 3%, 2%, or honestly, not really, or the Retribution Paladin may even be able to do more damage than the Protection Paladin. Depends on the Protection Paladin spec and group. But that's a whole other discussion. Point is, there isn't necessarily a significant difference, at least not because of talents. So it comes down to gear, right? Consecration scales very well on spell power, but Retribution wants to use melee gear most of the time. Well, what if they don't use melee gear? What if for trash you decide to change it up as a Retribution Paladin and use Pell Power Gear. For single target, you would use your melee Gear, you would use a two-handed weapon, but you don't have to do that for Trash. There's nothing stopping you, and many Protection Paladins would have Spell Power Gear anyway because they would be tank they would want to have a tank set for the situations where they might tank, like Karazhan, Zulaman, uh, Five Men, Herox, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure any self-respecting Retribution Paladin is gonna have some amount of spell power gear in their bank at the very least. But you, but you don't have to use tanking gear. A prop paladin, and this is the difference, a prop paladin has to tank. A red paladin array doesn't have to tank. So what that means is you can go completely crazy in terms of the gear you're running. You can stack spell power to a degree that prop paladins would only dream of. So with that in mind, I've built a gear list of, them, of spell power gear that you can use as a prop paladin in tier 4 and tier 5 to do a lot of damage with Consecration. Before I get into specific gearing though, it is important to recognize the following. You will want a group with a Shadow Priest and a, and a Shaman for with, that gives you Spell Power Totem. That generally would be a healer group if one of your... Uh, replace one of the healers that has less mana issues. So, it's a trade-off, right? A healer is going to get less mana, but the prop paladin is going to do a great deal of damage on trash. An enormous amount. How enormous? Well, consider that the prop paladin would be very happy to have, say, 600, 700, maybe 800 spell power unbuffed. And I'd say 800 is an extreme case. But you can reach more unbuffed 
as a rep paladin, do more damage, and with a shadow priest, you wouldn't have the mana issues. So with that in mind, to save the upgrades, this is the kind of gear set that I built. Nothing here is extraordinary, well, except the weapon, you would probably want to swap that out, just go with uh, the regular gladiator's gavel, just a, sw a quick change, just a mistake on my part. But everything else here is very achiev achievable, and you're not necessarily going to have a great deal of competition for these pieces. Because most spellcasters don't care about pure spell power, they care about crit, they care about hit. Uh, you're going to face a lot of uh, significantly less competition for this kind of gear that you, than you might believe. So I'm just going to go over every piece uh, by piece. Helmet, collar of Cho'Gal, no caster cares about this because they all want the meta gem, right? You don't care. You just care about as much spell damage as you can. Collar of Cho'Gal from Gruul or any helm that has a high amount of spell damage. Hell, you could go with en engineering ones if you can get it, put the meta gem, put some gems in it. Or you may not. You have choices you have flexibility you could go with the kyle of the ground engineering which no spellcaster would ever want because again the meta gem from void reaver there's so much gear available that has high spell damage that no one wants a necklace a necklace from badges of justice or other choices like from karazhan as an example if you can get that hell want to go pop back into molten core and get the choker of the fire lord the great the irony over there you can do so or some other choices as well, even some blue choices, really, uh, from uh, like Natasha's uh, choker. Some choices, plenty of choices. You're going for high spell power. Uh, shoulders, mantle of the mind flayer from Karazhan, shade of Orman, or you can go with the mantle of the elven kings or Eladari uh, shoulder pads if you're lucky enough to do that, or spalders of the torn heart from the cipher of damnation, the first fragment quest. Cloak, drape of the righteous from the Karazhan trash, which is a paladin only cloak, or any other cloak really that gives you high amounts of spell spell damage and there are certainly plenty of them but the drape of the righteous has 43 holy spell damage so i think it's the best choice available for you as a red paladin trying to do a lot of aoe damage robes uh a Chest, Bloodfire Robes of Annihilation from Cash of the Legion, Mechanar Normal. Some other uh, options are available, some with sockets, some without, like uh, the Robe of Hateful Echoes or some other choices available here. Granted, mo with much of this gear, I went with easy choices, not stuff you would compete for, because ultimately it's trash gear to go to have a high amount of spell damage. Uh, bracers, bracer band of nefarious deeds from maiden virtue. Not a lot of competition with these. Uh, weapon gladiators gavel. You can go with gavel of un unearthed secrets or blood, uh, uh, or any weapon that has a high amount of spell power. Gladiators gavel you can acquire for arena points in season two. Just arena points, I believe it will be 40 spell damage on that, 15 spell damage on cloak, 150 mana on a chest, uh, exalted. <clears throat> Exalted Aldor Scryer on shoulder. Uh, Web offhand. Cadgar's knapsack from Badges of Justice. Or again, some other choices are available that not necessarily a lot of people want, like Caribbean Talisman, for instance, if you so desire. Uh, gloves, hand wraps of flowing fo uh, font from Atom and the Huntsman. Though these are the kind of things that uh, casters would want, but there's other choices as well. Again, other choices, many other choices, many cheap options. This is like a best and slot list or <laughs> aspirational to go for. Nothing too crazy. Like there are some pieces that are better and but they're pretty crazy, right? Uh, belt, uh, belt of divine inspiration from High King Mulgar. Not something casters would want. Again, pants, trial fire trousers from Karazhan, from Julian Romero, from Opera event. Uh, boots, wind shear boots. Uh, they drop from Gruul. Again, not an item that has a lot of competition. And you get the point. Rings, Cobalt the Ring of Ter uh, Terragosa from uh, Manatum Saroc. If you don't want that, choices, Violet Signet of the Archmage, Ring of Spell Power <laughs> from Molten Core. <laughs> Great irony about fucking uh, Molten Core items still being really good, at least in terms of their spell power, not necessarily other things. Or you can go with Seer Signet, or Band of the Inevitable, or whatever you want, Band of the Alar. I mean, only Shadow Priest, I think, would want Band of the Alar, of Alar for instance. Uh, second Ring Spectral Band of Innervation from Atom and the Huntsman, which, by the way, you should have for protection because it's a really good ring for protection because of its, uh, of its high stamina, intellect, and spell damage. Uh, Trinket's Eye of Macferdon. 
I'm not too sold on this, but there are only a handful of spell damage trinkets. You just want to have as much spell damage as possible. And hey, if the first con tick of Consecration going to resist, then yeah, th this is good. Because um, it, it will proc it an Icon of the Silver Crescent. And Librum, Librum of Eternal Rest for 47 extra spell damage on Consecration. And all of this gives you 999 spell damage. Unbuffed. Flask is 80. Food is 20. Uh, oil is 40. You can do the math of that. And, and Totem is 100. You add it all up, what? 1200 spell damage? Actually, even more than 1200 spell damage. I'm not saying we'll beat Warlocks and Mages with this kind of gear as a Retribution Paladin, but you certainly will give the Warlocks a run for their money, especially on fights that are short, and especially if the trash just dies very quickly, because here's the thing. Arcane Mages will probably top the meters on AoE, because if things die quickly, then Warlocks don't get the chance to seed. But you... You won't. You probably will beat the arcane. Uh, you probably won't beat the arcane mages, but you may beat the warlocks in terms of AOE damage if things die quickly. Or maybe you don't. It doesn't matter. If you're just below the warlocks on the damage meter on trash, then that's a really good spot to be. You will beat prop paladins in term, terms of their damage. And going back to the video that I had. I wasn't beating the Warlocks and Arcane Mages, but I damn certain I was competing with them. Dependent on the pack, dependent on the situation, dependent on how much spell power gear I was wearing. Again, I was tanking with that. So this is a solution for a Red Palace. Now, people will turn around and say, Kostin, you're fucking insane. Should I put in all that effort to get that much spell power gear? Well, here's the beauty of it. You don't have to. Any decent amount of spell power, 500, 600, 700, fully buffed, unbuffed, doesn't matter. We'll, that, we'll make sure you do a lot of damage on trash. You don't need to go crazy for 1k spell power. You can go 500, 600 and then get raid buffs. Ask to be switched on trash for a Shadow Priest uh, a group with, uh, with a Shaman in that group that gives you spell power. And you will still beat everyone except the Mages and Warlocks. And maybe you won't beat the Prop Paladin because he still has Holy Shield. If you're only rocking 600 with 1k, you will beat the Prop Paladin by quite a bit. And you won't pull Fret. That's also another beauty. Warlocks pull fuck fret arcane mages don't warlocks do pull fret with their seed of corruption you won't pull fret that's another beauty of of this thing it's not you're not gonna really have fret issues give yourself a salve you won't have righteous fury on you'll do less fret because of your talents and you'll do very high damage it is a ridiculous way to get around the problem that red paladins have in terms of not having any damage but i recommend people try it and give me your results. Tell me how it goes down for you. Because I am really curious to hear how, how this plays out. But this is what I would do uh, to try and fix the issue. To make Red Paladins more viable for the sake of speedrunning. Cosinior signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. And stay tuned for more.